Dr. Ashim Devatkar, and welcome to my new series, Jew Panishad. Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's longest-serving prime minister, won the majority in the Israeli elections in November 2022. But much hostility existed between Netanyahu's camp and the Bennett government, especially because most of them perceived this elections as a stolen one. Because after all, we had a prime minister whose party won only six mandates. Bennett Parmashir faced many hurdles, especially from the fights the oppositions that eventually broke down his government. With the entry of Netanyahu's new government, many achievements of the previous one were cancelled. But nothing managed to move Israel from the important deal with the Indian tycoon god of Adani. And Netanyahu showed up to finish the work he had started 20 years ago, calling for the privatizations of Israel ports. This is an important reminder of the alliance immunity between Delhi and Jerusalem, which, unlike its most important ally, the US, prove itself to be the one that transcends political rivalries. But what is striking here is that the deal cannot be seen as just another business venture. We must pay close attention to how geopolitics plays a role. So let's talk about the massive deal. Israel announced in July it will sell the port in Haifa, a major trade hub on the Mediterranean, to wind and bidders Adani Ports and local chemicals and logistic group Gadot. Adani offered a staggering 4.1 billion shekels, equivalent to something around $1 billion for Haifa Port. This is 55% more than the second highest bid, and this turned out to be a much higher price than the Israel government had first anticipated. But in January, the privatizations of Haifa port had been successfully completed despite the change of governments. In recent months, the group, in cooperation with the authorities of the State of Israel, received the approval which were required to complete this deal, including the approval of the Commissioner of Competition for the merger, the approval of the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Transportation. The sale of one of Israel's main seaports has taken five years and marks the accumulations of a nearly two decades reform of an underperforming sector. What's the importance of Haifa port? Israel has three seaports, Ashdod, Haifa and Elat. The country's foreign trade is mostly cut off entirely through the seaports. As defined by the Ministry of Transportation, the ports are the country's oxygen pipeline through which 99% of all goods move in and out of Israel. The Haifa port is the second largest port in Israel in terms of shipping containers and the biggest in terms of tourist cruise ships. It is an important hub for international trade and has served as a crucial gateway for Israel to the rest of the world. But up until Adana's group purchase, the port was operated by Haifa Port Company, which is a government corporation. So why did Israel want to get rid of its ports? The answer is inefficiency and lack of competition. Israel's attempt to divert itself of its ports is rooted in the Trachtenberg Committee, which was appointed by the then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu following the social protests that broke out in 2011. Powerful emotions erupted during the protests, and the main underlying cause was the economic distress of individuals and families in the mainstream of Israeli society. In particular, the distress of young and working families who were overwhelmed by the cost of living, the cost of housing, and the proper care and education for the small children. These families harbor serious doubts about whether they will be able to establish an economic footing in the foreseeable future. The committee determined that the Israeli ports were not productive enough and were inefficient, costing hundreds of millions of shekels per year to the Israeli taxpayers. It was also concluded that the main failure of the industry was the lack of competition. In December 2011, the Israeli government adopted the committee's conclusions and instructed the various ministries to accelerate the port reform based on the implementation of the landlord model. So what is the landmark model? In this model, the publicly governed ports authority acts as a regulatory body and as a landlord, while private companies carry out port operations, mainly cargo handling activity. Landlord ports have a mixed character and aim to strike a balance between public and private interests. So back to our reform in 2011, the government decided to establish two new ports, the Gulf port near the existing port of Haifa and the port of the south near the port of Ashdod. These new ports were intended to compete with the existing ports and increase the capacity of Israel ports to handle containers. In 2015, the Chinese company Shanghai International Port Group won the tender to operate the Gulf port for 25 years. The port has been operational since 2021, and the South Port was constructed by another Chinese government company, the Pan Mediterranean Engineering, at a cost exceeding almost a billion dollars, and was opened a few months after the Gulf Port. 
In January of that year, the same company also won a tender for renovating the docks. As you can see, with the massive investments, China's economic involvement in Israel has expanded over the past decades. Trade between Israel and China is booming, and the free trade agreement, which is expected to be signed this year, will strengthen it even more. Today, China is Israel's largest trade partner in Asia and the third largest in the world. The expansion of economic relations between Jerusalem and Beijing hasn't escaped Washington approval. The White House put pressure on Israel to downgrade its ties with China. This pressure increased when Donald Trump took office and called for curbing China's investments in the Israeli infrastructure in the field of advanced technology. Washington has claimed that the Chinese presence in the port of Haifa possesses a security risk both to the U.S. Navy ships anchored in Haifa and to Israel naval facilities. This is not the first time that the U.S. has intervened in the relations between Israel and China. In the late 1980s and the early 1990s, the U.S. began to view Israel military and technological cooperation with China with an increasing suspicion and even hostility. Three major famous incidents contributed to this tension. Israel's sale of the Patriot missile technology to China, the agreement to jointly develop the Falcon Airborne Early Warning System, and Israel's sale of the Harper drones to China. In all of these incidents, the U.S. government pressured Israel to cancel or modify these deals, and in some cases threatened to withhold military and economic aid to Israel. Following this, the issue of controlling arms sales came up for discussions in the Knesset, the legislative branch of the Israeli government. And in 2007, for the first time, an arms export control law was enacted. The year's few major changes happened with the new Asian giant, India, what U.S. and Israel improved their relations with Delhi. In the eyes of Washington, India has become a rising power and an important partner for investment, trade, as also with dealing with the China challenge. This view has been shared by all American presidents since George W. Bush. For a long time, Washington has been trying to convince Delhi to reduce its relations with Moscow without guaranteeing alternative for its weapon technology or uh, energy requirements. The new understanding brought by the Abraham Accord and the ITU too may lead to the expansion of this partnership in a way that will answer some of India's concern. One of these opportunities brought by the new dynamic in the region is the Arab Mediterranean Corridor. The project will cut the shipping time from Mumbai to Europe by 40% and allow Delhi to ship goods to Europe within 10 days through connecting railway passing through Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Israel. While India is trying to counter the Chinese string of pearls with its necklace of diamonds, the new corridor will be a massive achievement for India's competition for connectivity with its neighbor. As the competition between China and India reaches new shores, the fact that Washington is okay with India presence is obvious. Washington perceived Delhi as a key partner to counter China's presence in the Indian Oceans and keep the maritime route free and safe. India's entry into the regions allowed the U.S. significant leverage and progress in its relations with Delhi. And this even strengthened even more Israel's importance to the U.S. in this new changing geopolitical landscape. But Israel cannot ignore China, because life in Israel does not allow this small country to be picky. Although Israel sees itself as a member of the Western democratic camp that shares its common vision and values, the multitude of security challenges in the strategic environment makes it nearly impossible for Israel to severe economic ties with China. This is why the timing of relations with India and the expansion of the foothold of Indian company in the strategic infrastructure projects in Israel Maybe Israel answer to American pressure.